Good morning, guys, and welcome to our Wednesday 5 for 5. Last week in my 5 for 5, I talked about how kindness is something that we need to have a whole lot more of in this world, right? Today, I feel like we kind of need to build on that idea and talk about how we deal with people that we disagree with. Now, with all the political and the cultural unrest in the world right now, the church has such a potential to show the love of Jesus. But the problem is that, that there's a lot of people in the church, a lot of believers that are so caught up in the political and the cultural unrest that they aren't really loving others like they should. Now, I'm not saying that believers shouldn't be aware of the current events or injustice or, or issues that we're facing. I'm just saying that we have to be certain that our, our primary calling to show Jesus to the law should never take a back seat to anything else in the world. There is nothing more polarizing than politics in our world right now. Not even college football, which is typically what we're arguing about this time of year, right? As I was praying over the issues, several passages came to mind in the book of 2 Timothy. I want to share those with you guys this morning, and then hopefully we can give us some application to those and work on how to disagree agreeably with others. Now, 2 Timothy 2, 23 starts with this. It says, Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. There is nothing wrong with disagreement in the body of believers, but it has to be done with kindness and with love. Unity is not the same thing as uniformity. We can have differing opinions and still live in unity with each other. You know, that's, that's something that's pretty unique to the church. We are all unified through our dependence on Jesus. We share something in common that is far greater than anything that we might disagree on. Now, in Paul's letter to Timothy, he was encouraging this young pastor to avoid useless arguments. And guys, we have way too many of those going on right now. Instead of those useless things, we need to engage with those who disagree with us with kindness and with patience. And we read that correcting part, right? I'm sure that a lot of you guys got excited because you were just told in Scripture to correct those that you disagree with. Now, I, I think we might honestly take too much pleasure in that part of the verse and forget the reason that we're engaging them in the first place. The ultimate reason that Paul lays out is so that God may grant them knowledge of truth and ultimately freedom from the devil's traps. Now, of course, when we disagree with someone as humans and as human nature, we're going to think that we're right and that they're wrong and they've got to be under some kind of demonic control to think whatever it is that they're thinking. But, you know, that's kind of dangerous. Uh, sin doesn't just impact our opponents. It impacts all of us. So where we might feel like we're justified in our argument, we also have to entertain the idea that by some chance, we might actually have a skewed view of the issue as well. Just understanding that idea is going to take a lot of the venom out of some of the unkind words that we might say during a disagreement with other people. We also need to be sure that we're educated on what it is that we're talking about, right? We have to make sure that our beliefs have a works cited page, for those of you that are still in school or remember those days, right? And that our works cited page is actually scripture. Our opinions are not fact, right? They're our take on the situation as we see it. We don't need to engage in a discussion with someone angry and ignorant because it, both of us are just going to lose in that conversation. James 1.9 tells us to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Now, when you have listened to their opinion, calmly expressed your own opinion, and you still aren't on the same page, it's okay. You don't have to write that person off and be done with them forever. Instead, just know that Jesus loves that person and places value on their life just as he does for you. Be unified in the mission of winning the lost, and don't let those disagreements fester and get in the way. Most of the things that we disagree on in this world will pass away with this world. Let's build our brotherhood and the things that are going to last forever. In John 13, Jesus says that the world is going to know that we are his because of the way that we love each other and the, and the love that we have towards each other. Don't let the enemy ruin your testimony with empty arguments over worldly things that are going to fade away with this world one day anyway. Let's accept the challenge, guys, that, that Paul gives Timothy in, in 2 Timothy 4, 5, when he says this, 
As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Guys, I'm praying for all of you and the unity of the global church at a time when the world needs to see unity. Do your best, guys, and then lean on the Holy Spirit to pick up where our weakness fails. See you later, guys. Hope you have a great week.